Okay, we're going to start building our tea bucket. Uh, we're going to start right from scratch. Right here is basically our chassis laying here right on the floor. We're starting with 2 by 3 inch square tubing, 3 8 plate, and some 1 inch square tubing for extra brackets and stuff. Um, we're going to be going by a lot of different plans. Anytime you start, it's always a good idea to have a set of plans to go by. There's quite a few on the internet. You can look them up. Some you have to pay for. I looked at a few that in that you know, 12 to $15 range. There's a bunch that are free. You can also search through just the images on uh, Google or any of the other uh, internet pages and search and find what you want look at the pictures see what looks like what you want yours to look like when you're done the big part is plan it out beforehand so you don't end up with a whole bunch of steel that you didn't need and spend a lot of money and run into a bunch of dead ends as you try to build it to two or three different options um, I looked at quite a few different ones, uh, purchased a couple of different ones, and what we build is actually going to be sort of a marriage of several of these different sets of plans, along with some of my own ideas and some I've got from doing an online search. But that's where we start, the pile of steel. Okay, I've got our sheet of our length of square tubing up here on the bench, and I'm just laying out for our first cut right here, which is going to be 22 and a half degrees. Um, my overall length of the piece to this point is 90 inches, and I was tempted to just measure the other side right out to 180 degree, 180 inches. This is going to give me 22 and a half degrees on one side, flip it over, it'll match on the other side. Thing is, rather than trying to account for the kerf of my cut in the length of what I'm going to cut the final length to, I'm going to cut this one first, then measure from my edge out 90 inches again. That way I don't have a kerf throwing me off by up to an eighth of an inch by the time I'm done and I have two lengths of frame rail that don't match up. So I'll take this one to the chop saw. I'm going to cut it off at the 22 and a half degrees, remeasure the other 90 inches from that side. Then I should have two, length, two lengths of steel match up perfectly. Okay, we got it all set up on the saw to cut our first piece. Uh, a couple things to keep in mind. One, make sure that your stock stays flush on your table bed, your saw bed. If it's not sitting on the table on both sides, if one side's up higher than the other, what you're going to get is an angle cut. And instead of having a nice square cut right straight down, you're going to have a cut running on an angle to match whatever one side or the other was up. Luckily, it just worked out that sitting on the tail of the vise on that bench works out to be exactly the same height as our saw. Doesn't always work out so well. The other thing to keep in mind is where your saw blade is going to touch in relation to your lines. Remember, even a sharp sharpie is going to make a mark about a sixteenth of an inch wide. So, if you've laid a ruler on here and drawn your line beside the ruler, make sure your saw blade only comes down to the edge of that line. Leave the line itself because where you measured to is on the other side of that line. Always keep the orientation of the lines in mind. And now we're about to cut off our first piece and this is the the virgin cut for this tea bucket. Oh, first I get to turn on the power. Now we've got power. Also got a lot of noise, but we'll take care of that in a minute. Okay. 
I've measured several times to make sure I'm right where I need to be. No turning back now. Okay, there's our first piece cut and laying on the bench. Now for the second piece, I don't have to worry about that kerf anymore. All I have to do is measure from my long edge down my piece, 90 inches, make a square cut straight across and cut it right on there. Okay, there's our mark at 90 inches. And even though my saw should cut square, I'm still going to use a square to even it up just to be sure. And I put that there. Need more fingers to be able to see. We've got our, using the square, extended our line right across at 90 inches again. And remember that my mark was here. Leave that marker. And we should have two pieces exactly the same. And there we go, two cuts that line up perfectly. So those are the two main lengths of our frame. We're off to a good start anyway. Okay, what we're going to have across the front of this frame is a two and a half inch tubular cross member. So what I've got here is a piece of two and a half inch steel it's thick walled tubing I'm not sure exactly how thick it is I haven't measured it yet but that's going to be our front cross member if you've seen many T buckets usually have the tubular front cross member you could if you wanted to use the square tubing to make your front cross member works just as well I've seen some of the plans on the internet that's what they use it's all cosmetics, what you like. But on this one, we're going to have a tubular front cross member. So at the front, I've already put a little bit of layout die on here so we can, my uh, scratches will show up. If you can't find a scribe because someone has used yours as a center punch, now it's no longer any good. What I've got, it's a sharpened piece of TIG rod. Uh, it's, I don't know, 3 16 or so. Uh, heavy TIG rod, took it to the bench grinder, sharpened it up. Doesn't keep a point real long because it's not hardened steel. If you wanted to harden it, you could do that as well. But for what we're doing, this will work fine. So, for our front cross member, what we're going to do first, we're using two and a half inch cross member. Hard to do this with two hands and actually do what I'm doing, trying to show you. So, set this up. We're going to measure in two and three eighths inch right here. We're going to make a small line. Okay, I don't know if you can see it. There's a line scribed right across our piece there we go at our two and three eighths inch in now we want to find center and the reason i'm using a scribe and layout die here rather than the sharpie i was using earlier is this i want to be exact because i'm going to drill a hole here with a two and a half inch hole saw in one side we're going to remove some other material we'll show as we go here um but the like i was saying with the sharpie earlier your mark is going to be minimum 3 16 wide. Or, excuse me, a sixteenth of an inch wide. And I don't want to be off a sixteenth one way or the other. So I'm going to scribe it so I can get an exact mark of where we're going here. So now I want to find center. I get a square. Mark that center. I'll scribe a line, turn it around the other side to make sure I'm not off any. And we'll have a mark perfectly centered and that's where we're going to drill our pilot hole and then we're going to drill it out with our hole saw. We're going to mark out the same thing on the other piece 
just remember. The long piece of our taper is going to be at the bottom. Because then when our other pieces come on here coming up, the angles are going to, this is 22 and a half, 22 and a half on the other piece is going to make a 45 degree angle here. We're only drilling out the inside on these. So keep in mind that we don't end up with two left sides or two right sides. Because we don't want two right side or two left side frame rails. We'll show more once we get her marked out. Okay, here we are. We've got all our frame pieces cut out. They're all clamped together. And keeping them clamped together perfectly is important because you don't want one of these frame rails to come out even a little bit different than the other one. So I've got them clamped side to side to make sure that it, they stay perfectly parallel lined up that way. And I've got them clamped together and actually to the table in this case uh, so that nothing moves. And uh, I've got our welds on everything I can get done here. A little closer. Everything's welded up here to this point. Um, now what I got to do is undo these bar clamps, flip this over, weld up the other side, and then split them apart. Grind out down these uh, grind down the outside welds so that these will still fit together nice and flat when I put them together up from the other side. Clamp them all together again and weld the other side. And then grind up all the welds so it looks like it's all one piece. Thing to remember, tack everything first. Don't just go and start welding everything all at once. Get them all clamped up where you want it tack it, weld around. Uh, when you do weld, make sure you just do a little bit at a time. Here I did probably about an inch at a time, inch at a time, inch at a time, all the way across. Here you can actually see where my stop and start was. It wasn't as smooth as it was there. Um, try and spread it out. Take your time. Let some of these welds cool down. Last thing you want is this thing to twist on you when you've got this much work into it already. Okay, something to note here. This is where we've got our cutouts for the round cross member at the front. You can see this is actually marked with the radius of where our axle is. We just cut away the front half, um, cut away everything else, tangent right out. So this is the outside. On the inside, it's cut away completely down to the radius and you can see it inside there. That's so when the cross member goes in it'll fit inside one side but against here. Once that's all in then we'll bend these around to cap the outside of that cross member. Make it look all nice and finished rather than a, the end of a square tube sticking out the front. Okay here we are we've got the frame all welded up and it's dry fit just into position. Uh, laying across a couple of tables here so I don't have to bend down and work on the floor. Uh, our welds are all welded, ground, almost flush. I didn't take everything off right down to it being smooth. I wanted to leave a little bit of the reinforcement, but I wanted to remove any of the line that would have shown where the weld was. So <clears throat> I welded it down to the point where it's just a bump, but you don't see the edge of the weld anywhere. Did it on the insides of these corners, outsides as well. Always be careful, don't grind out all of your welds. Um, and if you didn't get real good penetration in your welds, this is where it's going to show up. Um, we got, did pretty good here, nothing opened up, we didn't get any holes, and everything's where it should be. 
and because everything stayed clamped the entire time we were welding and then until it completely cooled, both frame rails are exactly the same. And there we go. So we got everything welded up for the perimeter frame. Uh, she's all one unit now. Hopefully it's still square and true. Here's a close up of what we did with the front cross member. It's tubular and we bent it around, welded everything up solid. What I ended up doing is this tab here, I ground back a little bit so I could weld the edge of this plate to the tube first, then bent this down, then welded the two together again. I think it'd just be a little bit stronger. I don't think strength is going to be our problem because uh, it's going to be pretty rugged. So we get this side all done as well. I still haven't ground it yet. I filled in the little hole at the end when I was lining things up. Um, but so far, it's turned out pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with it. Let's go around the back end and we'll take a look at what we've got all welded up there. Okay, again, now we're back at the back end. The frame's sitting upside down right now. There it is. Everything's welded. Now this cross member was notched for the frame rail. So cut in two inches, leaving just the, uh, the plate on the back. And it's welded off every seam. So there's no holes in it. She's pretty solid. I'm going to flip her over here in a second and we'll have a frame. Okay, here we are with the frame all welded up, all the grinding, or most of the grinding done. Uh, we're pretty close to finished on this. You can see where we wrap those pieces around the end of that tubular cross member. And we welded everything up. The two pieces are welded together in the middle. And with a little putty on it to smooth out all the grinding scratches, it should look pretty good. Got both sides done. Everything is pretty good. Welded around. This edge, remember I uh, ground this top piece back enough so I could run a bead of weld between the cross member and the side plate here. And then when I bent this down, I welded all three pieces together again. Just to give a extra layer of adhesion or a little bit more strength because we don't want this thing giving up on us. The back is done as well. We'll come around here. And again, everything is ground here. Any spots where there were maybe a little hole or imperfection in the weld and we ground out, went back and welded over. Luckily, there wasn't very many of them. Um, but just to be sure, at this point, it's easy to fix any mistakes. Later on, once it's got putty and paint and everything on it, welds that open up aren't going to be a good thing. So everything is all welded. And what we have is the complete perimeter frame for our tea bucket. Now comes the fun part hanging everything off of it. Okay, I got her off the bench. Now it's sitting on the floor. It actually looks pretty good. Nice and straight. Um, no twists. When I set it on the flat floor, there's no wobble. Everything worked out really well. It's nice and flush. Taking your time with the layout and the setup is the key to getting everything right the first time. The other thing I wanted to show you is at the end of the day 
my workshop. Other than a couple of papers I've got sitting there in my hat. Everything's put away. Floor is swept. Everything's clean. Ready for the next time. So when I come in tomorrow to work some more on this, I don't have to work in a pile of dirt.